Well, hello. It is that time of year when I do my top 10 pen list. I'm going to do it a little different today. I'm going to do a series of releases through the day. This is why these are all going to be a little late uh, of top 10s. Uh, this first one is going to be my top 10 most recommended pens. Now, for all of these top 10 lists, here it is. First, I have to have filmed a review of the pen. Uh, first impressions do not count. Pens in use does not count. It has to have filmed a review. And you will find the pens and the links to the reviews all down below in the video description. So if you like spoilers, look at the video description. Uh, second, these are not in any particular order. What I'm doing with this first list, this top 10 most recommended pens, are what are the 10 pens at various price levels I would recommend to a person who's looking to buy a pen. This may not be your list. Uh, honestly, there are a few pens that I've tried out I just haven't reviewed yet that I think would replace some on this list. But uh, without further ado, here it is. And I'm sorry, no writing samples today, but I'm providing video links so uh, you can get all the writing sample you want. So let's take a look at them. If you hear microphone-ish noise, it's because I'm still in my living room and the uh, microphone is sitting on the table where all of this is happening. So this will probably be noisier than it should be. So my first pen is going to be a Platinum Preppy. Now why the Platinum Preppy? Well, it's versatile. It's a very good quality pen. It's very low cost. It's relatively rugged. And if you lose it, you lose it and get another one. Excuse me, almost getting hiccups there. When I say versatile, this nib, now I can put in a different nib. I can put in uh, one of the felt tip markers. Uh, I don't know if it's still true, but the Noodler's Rollerball tips even fit into this pen. I can also use Platinum's cartridges, Platinum's converter, or eyedropper the pen. I use these as board markers at school. So, at the low cost end of this, I place the Platinum Preppy. Now we'll take a jump up in price here. This is the Pilot Metropolitan. A very high quality metal writing instrument. Oh, I should mention, since I wrote all these notes down, I should use them. Uh, if you like the Platinum Preppy but want something a little classier looking, the Platinum Placier uses the exact same nib, but it has a less garish metal body. All right, so Pilot Metropolitan. Some other alternatives in this genre would be like the Platinum, or I'm sorry, not Platinum, it's Pilot. Uh, the Pilot Prera, uh, Pilot Kakuno. There may be some others, but those are two coming to mind. Uh, so this is a... Pilot Metropolitan. It's a retro pop. I found it rather attractive, but you can get a more conservative design. You may have noticed I don't write with it that often. Main reason is I have other pens I like better. More expensive pens. But it is a very nice quality nib, and there's several nib sizes available. And it's a cartridge converter pen. Of course, Pilot is a proprietary cartridge converter. But even so, a worthy pen at this price point, it's reliable, it is well made, and it has that quality feel that uh, I'm comfortable recommending to people. Now the next on the list is a new entrant this year. Uh, I'll try and put the links to my old versions of this video down below. Uh, this is a Wing Sung 698. I was surprised to put this one on but it's a very high quality pen. I'm thrilled with how it's writing. In fact, right now, I have it inked up and it wasn't even for this video. Uh, I can't demonstrate it since it is inked up, but one of the th features I kind of like, you know, some pens went with blind caps that cover up the real piston turning knob. This piston turning knob actually has a little catch mechanism in it. So you have to pull this out before you can actually turn the piston. So all in all, very high quality pen, very quality writer. Also, kind of as a bonus, you can switch out with Pilot nibs because it's the same feed. So Wing Sung 698, very impressive pen and not any really particularly gorgeous finishes, but uh, 
a good pen nonetheless. Next, I present to you a perennial favorite on this list, Lamy Safari. Yes, there are lower cost Chinese offerings that are very similar, uh, but I think the Lamy Safari just is a little bit higher quality, uh, has, gets all those details right. Uh, it's a very good, very rugged, very reliable pen and a lot of different variety of finishes. Uh, you can go a little more up marking, get the Lamy All-Star. The Lamy Studio actually uses the same nib as this, and it's a metal-bodied pen. And the uh, Lamy Dialogue 3, although it's a gold nib, is the same style nib. And if you really want to go crazy, I've never used one, but the, apparently the Lamy Emporium uses the same nib, only again in gold. So I suppose if you were into that kind of thing, you could put a gold nib on this. Some don't care for the triangular grip. Doesn't bother me. So, cartridge converter pen. Again, a proprietary. But I think this is just an excellent pen that I have no problem recommending. Let's get the Lamy logo on top. Probably doesn't show up in the video, but... There we go. So, the Lamy Safari. Now, taking a journey west rather than up in price you can tell I use this one a lot just from the wear and tear on it whoops I just got a notification for a meeting and sorry it's my day off I'm on break <laughs> I think they sent it by accident but this is a pocket pen uh, becomes full size when posted it's a cartridge converter pen i really liked it a lot better once they once kveco came out with this converter i hated the aerometric converter uh, i think the newer style has a little bit better nib on it but you know this is an old one this is uh four, well five years old at least but pen i use especially in the summer all the time it looks kind of minute <laughs> sitting there with this company Now, so far, all these pens that I've recommended have been steel nibs, although you can get a gold nib for, for the Caveco and for the Lamy, but uh, actually, I don't know if you can put the gold nib in the Caveco Sport, but so I take that back. But this is the first pen I've shown here that has a gold nib. Uh, this is one of the lowest cost gold nib pens you can find. Uh, this is a Pilot, I'm sorry, wow. A Platinum 3776. This is in kind of a reddish finish. Another cartridge converter pen, but the, I've found I don't mind them because actually they're much easier to clean than uh, a piston filler. This has a soft, fine nib, which is, you know, pretty spectacular for everyday writing. Um, proprietary converter. Uh, I just did a test on this pen. Uh, th there is a mechanism that holds a seal they say for up to three years or two years uh, i'm going to possibly do an experiment with that but you can look forward to a big mass review of all my uh, platinum 3776s here in the very near future of course when i want to use a pen for just daily writing i go for the lamy 2000 uh, I've had this pen for a very long time also, and I use it almost all the time. It's a, the, the ears are a little controversial. Uh, they, they're used to hold the cap in place, but just look at the fit and finish on this pen. Until you start looking closely, you don't even notice. Yeah, very well-made pen. And it feels good, just feels good to write with it. And that's, you know, well, at the time I bought it, it was a step up from the Platinum 3776. I'm not sure right at the moment where the prices rank. I, uh, that's why I'm not giving dollar amounts, I guess. Uh, some people have asked why don't I give prices for these pens. It's because, depending on where you buy them or when, they can be at all different levels. Now, uh, 
another one that surprised me. Kind of a sleeper. Doesn't look like much, but a Platinum President. Uh, I really enjoy this pen a lot. Uh, I had mine ground to a, a Curse of Italic. It's a broad nib. I just love writing with it, and it just feels right in the hand. Um, another cartridge converter pen, but as I've said, they're easier to clean. So it really is not a detraction in my mind if it's a cartridge converter pen. Sometimes I'm more likely to ink them up just because I know they'll be easier to clean out. You know, the Lamy 2000 gets away with it because that stays inked for months at a time. That said, my last two pens, and again, this is not ranked on most to least or anything. This is more ranked generally around price. Um, uh do not have a cartridge converter. These have a built-in mechanism. So this is Pilot Custom 823. Also a very good pen for a daily writer if you get the fine point, which I did. Okay, it's not focusing. Still not focusing. There we go. Uh, this pen is a kind of a fun mechanism actually to fill this is a vacuum filler if i if it was sitting in a bottle of ink right now I, ink would have rushed in uh one of the drawbacks this filling mechanism it is very hard to clean it out perfectly so if you're a purist that way maybe not the pen for you although the finish the rather 70s looking kind of helps hide that but uh, yeah, if you're a purist, maybe this is not quite the pen for you. And finally, the most expensive pen on this list, and uh, sad to say not the most expensive in my collection, although I think it might be up there at, I don't know, number two or number three. All right, so at top position on this list is going to be the Aurora 88. Um, I've owned the vintage version of this pen. Uh, fell in love with it, so I wanted to try the modern version. As it turns out, quite nice. This one happens to be a special edition with a their flex type nib. Come on. Right, maybe if I sneak up on the autofocus, I can get it to work. Eh, whatever. Anyway, it's a piston filling pen. So, I don't know, I, I said they're a little harder to clean out. If you want to, though, you can unscrew the nib unit, so there is that. Uh, but all in all, the Aurora 88, very nice pen. I, uh, if they weren't so darned expensive, <laughs> I might look at getting, you know, a fine point abroad. I like how it writes, uh, but they are kind of expensive, so I probably won't be buying any in the near future. But that said, quite a wonderful pen. So those are what my top 10 most recommended pens of 2018. Uh, look forward to next year and I'll see, see what's been promoted, what's been demoted. Um, I, when I recommend a pen, these aren't necessarily my favorites or most fun to use. These are ones that I think are dependable and reliable, and of course at different price points. And you'll find a video review of each of these pens down below in the video description. Uh, some of them I've even revisited, so you can possibly find two videos on them if you want to see them in detail. So, uh, <coughs> excuse me, wow. So what pens would you recommend? Please feel free to leave a comment down below. And if videos like this interest you, uh, I would invite you to subscribe. So I thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.